We're finally here, the Dark Tide Scab Captain build. This is a fun project. Um, it's been a while since I've made anything this form fitting. Everything else over the last couple of years has been a very big and bulky costume. And it's been pretty nice to actually just walk like normal for once on the con floor. This all started probably about a year ago, um, around winter time, my girlfriend finally got into playing Dark Tide with me. And immediately she said that she wanted to cosplay as a zealot. Um, there's a armor set in particular that we were both very fond of that we both had to have and uh, immediately she wanted to dress up as it which meant I had to make a costume to go with it. I wanted to make something that was detailed and also like really cool. Um, my first thought was Captain Wolfer because um, he just looks awesome. He looks badass. Um, downside was though that since the game's release it seems like his design has slowly changed as the game went on. Um, I don't know if that's just part of his character development or if that's just slow design changes from Fat Shark. So I kept looking around for something else that had a similar presence to Captain Wolfer. So I kept playing and then I saw this guy. So we have our character we're working on, and in this episode, we're gonna cover the chest piece first. But first things first, I'm gonna need a little bit of assistance so I can make my template. This was a standard duct tape template, starting with a layer of plastic wrap to have something for the duct tape to cling to. All right, we're good. Okay. Moving. Like a ballerina. Ballerina. And then how far is this We'll go up to my armpits and then we'll wrap around over my shoulders. We focused mainly on my left side because I only needed to make half of this since the chest armor is symmetrical. I can just invert the template later. And with that all wrapped up, came the duct tape. Okay. So now you get to make me a mummy. I covered the front while she covered the back and any of the spots that I couldn't reach. Okay. Okay, now I just gotta go over the shoulder. I'm short, what do you expect me to do about that? Do you want me to get down on my knees? Uh, why don't you sit on this little chair here? And if I do, that's gonna do all. So, I'll get down. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, some of us are only short. <laughs> and before cutting the template, I drew out the shape of the armor so that I knew where to cut later. Of course it looked like that's ending. So if the belt's, I want to say his belt is higher up. So his belt's probably at the belly button. Yeah, that is the actual waist. Yeah. You know that this is the actual yeah. waist. So if the belly button's here, I want to say it's it probably ends. at his actual rib cage. Yeah. So that would be probably right about actually here. Well, in that case, is it... It's not a straight V. It looks like it. It's a. It's, it, a, slope. it's a slope, and then it curls. Yeah. Okay. So it starts. It's almost like it follows the um, the rib cage. Yeah. And as for the back, I have no idea. So I would just. Yeah. Because there's not. I'll tell you what. Um, I'll give you the marker. I would make it make it straight across yeah. from the from the line, okay. and then um, I'll do some more research before I do any final changes. You know what I mean? Right. Then we finished off with outlining the neck and arm openings. From there, we were good to cut off the template. Yay! And with that off, we can move on to making this an actual template. Okay, I'm going back up. Okay. Sable, mommy, I'm to you. Okay. 
All right, so now with the help of my lovely assistant to uh, make me my template, next thing I need to do is cut this all out. Um, I only did one half because once you make your template, you can just invert it for the other side. No reason to go all out, it's a waste of material. So we kind of got an idea. It's not always gonna be perfect, but we got a general idea of the shape. This will give me the right idea for all the curves I'll be doing and everything like that. So it does look like we kind of forgot to uh, mark the back center. Um, not a huge deal because nine times out of 10, when you're translating from a uh, duct tape template to foam. Um, foam is a thicker material, so what's going to happen is it tends to be a little tighter. Um, if I make this the whole way out to the edge where we ran this tape, which was supposed to be down the center of my back, um, if we did it correctly, that should get me somewhere in the ballpark of what I want. And worst case scenario, once I make this all out in foam, before I laminate the two pieces together, I will be trying it on. So if I need to make any adjustments then, I will. All right, and there we go. Our half chest piece cut out. Um, normally what I do then is there's usually a little bit of excess uh, plastic wrap underneath. I try and take all that off. Mostly because when I go to transfer this to foam, I want this to lay as flat as possible, or at least I'll be getting the pieces to lay as flat as possible. And excess plastic wrap can cause things to bulge up a little bit when you're trying to lay it down flat. Um, worst case scenario, that deforms the shape of your template that you're transferring and then your foam piece won't be as accurate. That should be good enough. All right, so I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna walk over to my mirror Try this on real quick one last time just to make sure that it does look okay and make any changes i need with my sharpie and then we'll go from there be right back yeah pretty good first try Well, that's probably a first. I had to make new modifications. Uh, having a little bit of help, I guess, really helped me out on that one. Uh, normally I have to make a couple adjustments, add some like paper to it to add some things, subtract some stuff. I'm probably gonna have to do something like that still along the way. But as for now, it's turned out pretty good. On to the next part. From here, I cut the chest apart for its front and back pieces, and then transferred them to cardstock. I prefer to do this with my templates before transferring things to foam, so that I know the two halves are the same, since duct tape templates have a tendency to wrinkle and not lay down flat. Okay, so I just got done transferring my duct tape template to a paper template. Um, am I going to be saving this for later as like a free template when I'm done? Uh, that all remains to be seen, depends on how things go afterwards. Um, not so much how they look, but more... Do I accidentally lose it? <laughs> so anyway, um, this isn't your basic shape. That's, I mean, how do I put this? This isn't the final shape. Um, this is the basic shape. Uh, unfortunately, in the game, there's not like an in-game model viewer or anything like that to kind of like get a really good close look at the enemy's armor and stuff like that. So I had to resort to a ton of homework. This means playing a lot of Dark Tide, taking a lot of footage, screenshots, and that kind of stuff. And then grabbing every bit of promotional imagery, artwork I can find, just so I can get an idea of how this armor actually looks. Um, I know you probably can't really see it too well on my 
on my screen here. So he has a giant gorget in front of his face um, that's riveted onto his chest armor. So it's kind of hard to see what's behind that, you know? So fortunately, when I was doing some work or some homework, I guess, looking for the helmet, I found this image right here from ArtStation. Um, it's official concept art from one of the artists. What's cool though, is that on top, you have the helmet that the person drew out. Um, this is pretty much accurate to a T to what it actually looks like, but they drew it over the actual 3D model of the actual chest armor minus the gorget. So I can see where the straps are, what their shapes are like, and also this trim around the neck, which I can now get. Um, I didn't know it was there originally, but it is there now. Another cool thing, um, I took several screenshots of him when he died because most of the time when you're fighting him in game, he's got a shield, you can't see him that well, or at least take a clear screenshot. So anytime you can really get any good screenshots of him is when his shield goes down and that's for a very limited time and when he dies. So anytime he died, I played the assassination missions over and over again. And anytime he would die, I would run around him real quick and take pictures of him because he can fall in different directions based on however he was when he, you know what I mean? So when I did this, I got some really good close up images of the uh, shoulder, like the arm opening. And I was able to see that there's actually like a, uh, a secondary piece there, like a fold almost. So now that I'm aware of that as well, I can get that too. Same with, uh, there's an actually separation underneath the arm. So it's actually a front plate and a back plate that are then strapped together. So that's what I'll be doing now. Now that I have this out, I'm gonna mock it up. And then I get to figure out with some more paper, the shape for that inner arm trim and then for the little trim around the neck. Once that's done, then I'll be good to transfer this all to foam and start building all that. Um, I, I'm more waiting to do the giant gorget because I think that's pretty, gonna be pretty cool. Especially all the little spikes that stick out in front. It's gonna be awesome. So I taped everything back together to get it back to its shape so that I can fill in the trim around the arms. Okay, so the template is mostly done. Um, there is the trim around the neck that I'm gonna have to do, but I'm gonna do that after I build this whole thing. Um, reason being, um, more or less the way I'm gonna do it is I'll build a full cylinder, put the chest piece on, drop the cylinder down, and then start marking around where this is to kind of get that perfect bevel for the entire bottom half to cut. That way it perfectly matches this and all that stuff. A couple things I didn't record that I should mention is that I also made a couple registration marks so I know exactly where everything's going to connect. Um, we'll have to label things here on the side as well. But in the end, this will eventually be one, two, three, four pieces because this will split here and here for a front and back piece. And um, so that's going to... These corners have a little bit of a bevel, so that's going to be a straight edge with a 45 to kind of get this little bit of an angle going on here. So that's going to make two in the front, two in the back um, with these pieces here. Um, as for what I will be transferring this to, I have decided or at least for the chest piece to use 10 millimeter foam. Um, my sizes that I have, since I'm still using Hobby Lobby foam, is 10 millimeters, five millimeters, and then I believe three or two, I can't remember. Um, five would be a little too thin and flimsy. 10 will give me that stiff rigidity that I really want, and it'll um, make it look like it's actually pretty tough too. If we could find a decent middle ground in between the two, that'd be great, like maybe like an eight, but 
Don't have that, so we're going with the 10. And from here, I split all my pieces back apart to transfer them to foam. Even though these are simple pieces, I still make sure to always label them anyway. F for the front, B for the back, and the shoulder trim being F1, F2, B1, B2. The arm openings and its trim both got an angle cut to give it a 90 degree bend. And I believe the front chest was one angle cut and one straight cut for a 45 degree angle bend. Everything was glued together using weld wood contact cement. And I currently left the front and back pieces separate for the time being. Okay, so the shape of the chest is fine now. Um, could be better, but I'm happy with what I got. Um, I still have to do the ring around the neck, but I'm gonna wait until I actually test things. But this being 10 millimeter foam, it wants to go back to the shape that it was when it was in the roll. So I need to kind of get it to stay in this shape. So that's where this whole thing comes into handy. I'm gonna hit it real good from the inside. Hopefully that helps form it into shape. Okay. There we go. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but at least help it hold its shape a little bit better. I'm going to leave it taped up for a bit. I'm going skating right now, so hopefully that helps a little bit when I come back tonight to work on it again. Shape will be a little bit better, and I can start doing some cleanup and working on the uh, the bonding pieces on the shoulders and underneath the arms. Now once that's done, work around the neck, and then I get to work on the cool gore gate. That's my favorite part. I can't wait for that one. And before starting any details, I brought out my portable sanding booth and began beveling all my edges. Both for the sake of cleaning the edges up, but also to make them look worn. And with that all done, came time to start working on the neck trim. This was 10 millimeter foam as well. I more or less just made it into a cylinder and began working on figuring out the curve for where it mounts to the armor piece. This will be two pieces, one attached to the front and one attached to the back. I did have a small gap in the front, which wouldn't be seen once the gorget got made and put in place but I still made a tiny piece to fill in the gap and glued that in place. And with everything glued on, I reassembled the chest armor and gave it a test fit to check mobility with the new neck trim. It feels pretty good. All right, so the uh, mini neck trim is now on. It's not pretty yet. Um, I had to make shift a tiny little piece here in the front um, because this was up too high. Um, I don't know. Um, it's going to be hidden anyway. Once I put in the actual gorget that's in front here, um, this is never going to be seen unless you're looking like down and over it. And even then, my helmet's going to kind of cover a bunch of that too, so it should be fine. Um, I'll clean it up anyway later and make it all nice and smooth. Um, probably with just some foam clay. But that all done, before I do anything else, which in this case would be uh, permanently sealing these together 
and then making the fake straps. Um, I decided I'm gonna make this one whole piece. I'd already tested everything on. I can slide this on and off real easy, so no problem. <clears throat> I can just make this thing permanent and I can just slide the whole thing on. Then I don't have to worry about um, strapping things, anything coming loose, it, it'll be fine. So before I go anywhere else, um, there is something I like to do to all my armor pieces. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I do it anyway. Um, and that is I reinforce the seams on the inside um, just with some hot glue. What I'll do is I'll run a strip along it and then kind of zigzag down almost like a weld, but with hot glue. Um, this is already holding pretty good, but in theory, to me at least what this does is this gives it a little bit extra hold that way if there's any kind of pull you know it's also got to pull on that hot glue and that's holding it together so my theory is that it kind of helps give it some support to keep it from pulling apart um contact cement is supposed to be pretty strong and um supposed to have a good permanent bond with this stuff but i have had instances where it has come apart especially after a lot of wear and tear. So the hot glue welding that I like to call it helps a little, or at least I like to believe it. So, um, or at the very least, it, it's kind of like an ease of mind thing, you know, it makes me think it's gonna hold together better. So let's get gluing. Did I get it all? Looks like I did. All right, and that is our hot glue welding. Um, as you can see, all I really did was just get the inside of everything. So the inside of the corners and seams, around the arms, down the center, around the neck. Is it necessary? I don't know, but it makes me feel better. So that's all that matters. And with that done, I can move on to what's next, which I don't know what that is. Um, I'm always winging it. <laughs> what is next? Oh, yeah, that's right. I already said it. Um, I'm going to probably take something on the inside here, probably five millimeter foam, just a piece around the inside, and that'll um, secure that in place. And then over top on the outside, I'll do some fake brackets and some more fake uh, pieces. I might even glue these sides together as well. That's a big possibility. Um, I'm going to go over it all again with the Dremel one more time since I had to hand cut these neck pieces just to get them to line up a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I will make sure that when I do line these up that this will all be a little bit better, which means I'm probably going to have to trim this down just a little bit more but that's fine. Um, this one seems okay. Yeah, when I go to glue this one, that's gonna have to come down a little bit. So that's gonna require a little bit more sanding. So let's do that. Just try yet. About dry enough. All right, so I just got done saying that I like to reinforce all my seams with hot glue, but here I am reinforcing it now with actual like five millimeter foam. Why am I doing that? Um, 
Anytime I've ever made any kind of armor like this, especially something you gotta put on and off, under the arms especially get the most wear and tear. Um, just simple hot glue probably isn't gonna do it. The putting on and off, these take a lot of pressure in these spots in this seam. So to um, alleviate that a little bit, I'm going to go and laminate some actual foam there to act as like a nice bandage. Um, obviously there will still be some on the outside as well to also help hold that, but better safe than sorry. Worst case scenario, if you do get any rips in this seam, um, the plates are supposed to look like they're apart anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything really if the ends are a little separated and look like you're kind of flexing. This will help ensure that everything in the crucial part is still going to stand intact. Um, you might have a little bit of breakage still in the very ends, but that's okay. Hardest part's remembering which one went where. I didn't label them. It doesn't really matter because just as long as they're not seen, that's all that really matters. Uh, the only downside to this really is that it's going to make the inside just a hair tighter. Um, not a lot, but you know, if you are making something insanely tight, this is going to make it even tighter. And in this case, these here are going to raise the armor piece up just a hair too. Um, that's fine. I mean, I hope we'll find out. I am going to be wearing a helmet anyway, so it's not going to... And I haven't designed the helmet yet either, so I'll be able to uh, build that around this. But the height of this neck guard is exactly where I want it, so... I mean, I hope now that I did this... Okay, and... That's good. And just to make sure, I'm gonna throw it on. I'm gonna throw it on real quick and make sure it's still at a decent height. One thing I have noticed is that when I put this on, um, <laughs> I have to turn my head sideways to get it on um, because it is so tight around the neck. It uh, does not give me the room to get out. But. Looks like it did not hurt anything, so that is good. A little snug fit, which is exactly what I want. Um, underneath this is going to be just two layers. Um, it's going to be like a, a fake gambeson kind of thing, and a, uh, a tabard that goes over top of that. Uh, and that's it. Um, the gambeson will be more or less just a t-shirt with some uh, long drapey parts on the side. I'm not sure I'm doing that yet, but I need to talk about that because I'm not on that yet. I have ideas about it. So this feels fine. I'm going to walk over to the mirror real quick and take a look at that. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I like it. Um, everything is good to an extent. So what we'll do now is um, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the uh, fake pieces here on this. And then uh, I'll clean this up here. And then I get to start working on the actual gorget, which is the part I'm excited about. Uh, it's getting late in the day means the gorget will be probably be for tomorrow. Um, I'll try and maybe do these before I go to bed. Using some on-screen references, I laid down some duct tape and began drawing out my template for the shoulder straps and their brackets. This way I can mimic the shape for the other side by inverting the template. The 
brackets were 10 millimeters and the straps were five. For the back pieces, I added triangular pieces to the sides to give it a little bit more depth. And with some contact cement, I glued it all in place. I also made the small little details on the back. These will be slightly visible underneath the cape. And with that all glued on, I repeated that process for the straps under the arms too. I also brought out my Dremel and used the end of my sanding bit to make fake rivets in the back. And then I used a smaller sanding bit to dig out smaller holes in the front and underneath the arms. Looks good. Up next, I finally get to work on the Gorgon. I used some scrap cardstock to figure out the angles that I wanted and to mock up the shape. This took a ton of trial and error, and I knew I was gonna need a top trim to help hold it to shape. It is there in the in-game model, but I really needed it here, otherwise the foam would wanna pull away from its shape and fan out. This piece of trim helped keep that top portion tight. And with that all mocked up, I can finally transfer it all to foam. If I remember right, the front center was an angle cut and a straight cut to form a 45 degree angle and the top trim was two angle cuts for a 90 degree bend. And before gluing, I gave the edges a quick hit with my Dremel to give it some wear and tear and started layering on the contact cement. And with the glue dry, I pressed everything into place. After that, I started mocking up the spikes on the gorget. I just used some construction paper, placing it up against the gorget, and drawing out what felt right compared to the reference images. Once I had what I wanted, I traced it all out the foam. This was three layers of 10 millimeter foam for each spike. 
and it was probably overkill, but for the center layer, I cut out notches for some small dowels to help keep the spikes stiff. And with those glued in, I laminated the three layers together and then started drawing out the shape of the spike on the outside surface so that I had an idea of what kind of cuts I would need to properly shape the spikes. To cut this to shape, I used a larger and longer blade to cut this to form. I also made sure to keep the blade sharp and soaked in oil so that the cuts would stay smooth. All right, so we are on the final stretch with the chest piece. Um, only thing really left to do are to sand these down, smooth them out. Uh, made a couple mistakes um, with my reinforcements inside. I kind of didn't center them as much as I thought I should have. Um, that's my bad, but some foam clay will cover that up in the end and that'll be fine. Uh, one thing I did notice was that I had a little bit of a goof in the back. Um, Nothing major because this guy's gonna have like a cape and um, a pelt and some other stuff on his back. So back's never really gonna be seen. But while playing some Dark Tide last night or this morning after work, um, I noticed that there is one other enemy that shares a lot of the base armor as the scab captain does. Um, I, it's like the high level grunts. I can't remember what their actual names are. And after killing some, because I, I realized, I was like, oh, hey, they have the same exact peak in the front, the same straps. It's like, that's cool. It's the same thing. So when I killed one, um, he was laying on his chest. I could see his back. And I realized I made a couple goofs in the back. So this little detail that's here, that's that's there. That's supposed to be there. Same with these. Um, there is a little cutout right here in the back, maybe about like an inch up. that goes out to about here-ish. That's fine, I can add that, but what I can't add is that starting from the shoulder down to about here, there's about a 45 degree angle. Um, I probably could add it, but at the same time it might mess up the shape of this considering I'm already here. Um, if I was to do that, how do I put this? Um, to put that in now, I would have to pretty much make that cut here and then everything here on the inside would have to get replaced because the cut angle here would have to be different because to make a 45 from this to this i would also need this corner here off of the center piece to be different because it's no longer going to be going straight in it's going to be coming out just to get that across so fortunately that's not going to be seen by anybody but i'm aware of it and it's going to bother me now until the end of time or until cats are having fun upstairs. It's going to bother me until the end of the project. But yeah, so can't do much about that 45 now. That's past point of return. Um, I can put the notch in here. That'll be fine. I'll have to sand everything off on that. But up next, I need to sand these down and then I start attaching them. Um, I'll wait until after I sand them down to make sure I get my proper angle because you see the uh, gorget here has a little bit of a forward outward lean. Um, that's intentional. Um, from all the pictures I saw, it looks like it's not straight up. It comes out a little bit, which is good because when I try this on, it gives me a ton of room, not just for my face, but when I put my mask on hood too, like the helmet, um, that's going to give it room to move as well. So that's great. And this neck trim here goes straight below my chin. So when I have the helmet on, I don't have that much room to kind of move my head this way, but that's okay because anywhere that's going to hit that, um, the helmet's not really going to hit it, but it's also going to kind of help limit my movement 
which gives the helmet a very stiff and rigid look, which makes everything look a little more uncomfortable, which kind of makes sense for this kind of character anyway. But I'm rambling, so I just got to figure out once I have these on, like what angle do I really want these? My current idea, because a lot of these spikes they have on their armor, um, it's not front heavy, is kind of all over the place. Like some of them, I mean, per enemy, it's kind of all over the place. Some of them will have a giant spike here on the chest. You know, some of them will have, but anyway, since the scab captain has two here, my thought is like, do I make them uniform or do I make them like slightly offset? You know, because if anything, I probably, well, they're not going to interfere with the spike on the helmet that there's going to be. But at the same time, it's like, maybe I should have this one fine because the spike on the helmet is going to be off of this side going that way. So maybe I'll have this one down a little bit, maybe to the side. You know, it's not going to be something super noticeable, but it could help, you know, avoid any contact between the two. Um, something to consider, which means maybe after I sharpen these up, maybe I will wait to attach them until after I make the helmet. That would be a smart decision. Okay, now I'm going to get back to work while the cats run around upstairs. So I brought back out my portable sanding booth and cleaned up the spikes as best I could, flattening out the sides and sharpening the points. As I've said in the past, this portable sanding booth isn't perfect, but as you can see, it catches the bulk of the dust, and that's a lot better than nothing, making cleanup a lot easier. And with all those done, I gave the chest piece another test fit and checked in the mirror to see where I wanted the spikes placed on the gorget and to double check their mounting angle. Everything looked good, so it came time to glue them on in their permanent position. While I waited for my contact cement to dry, I gave the spikes a thin layer of foam clay to cover up my goof from earlier, where I accidentally exposed the dowel rods inside. And this clay will take a couple days to dry, which is okay because I can sand it smooth later afterwards. And with the glue ready, I put on the chest piece and grab my spikes, and attach the spikes while wearing the chest armor. Just let me see exactly how they would look right before putting the spikes in their final spot. And with that all good, I let the foam clay on the spikes sit and dry for a few days, and then went at it with my Dremel to smooth out the spikes one last time. And from there, for the time being, the chest was done, and we're ready for the next part, which will be this bad boy. In the next episode, we will be talking about the helmet on this costume. So, see you in the next one.